Let's see. I see a wood turtle. Barb, you see that? How about that for a spot? Bam! I'm a little wood turtle. Hi, buddy. What have you been eating? Well, I've been eating some mud. I've been slugs. What you doing? Awesome little wood turtle. So, you... We could probably roughly count that. One, two, three. Yeah, you might be about six. What have you been eating? <laughs> Look at that little beady eye. Isn't that cute? All right, so we're going to try to give you guys a video with some uh, different turtle content. It's going to start ramping up, and we're going to go into turtle nesting time so i want to make sure i got a bunch of stuff documented you people ask for this content so don't let me down all right this guy's eating what pray tell are you actually eating What is that? Only you know what you're eating. I'm gonna say it's a worm. All right, we're looking for some wood turtles. Hi. Look at you. That's a beautiful female. Yeah, you're just wonderful. Actually, it sounds amazing that we, we find turtles in all of this. These guys are such creatures of habit. So if you give them a good place to hang out where they're safe, sorry about this. Give them a safe place to hang out. They just keep coming back to it. And, uh, and they start collecting. Oh, I got one right here. See this one? All right. Yeah. So right there, that's four adult female wood turtles these guys are uh, setting up to nest I know these turtles very very well and we just want to make sure they have good safe nesting we, we try to get them to nest this is one of the spots right in here they love this spot and then we can protect it Nothing better when uh, people are telling me, oh, I saw a baby wood turtle running across my yard. And it's pretty cute. Believe it or not, the wood turtles will come out here and nest. And uh, then you can put down a wire grate with spacers underneath it. So when the babies hatch, they can just escape. Because you never know like how long exactly it takes for them to hatch. But believe it or not, okay, here we go. That's a wood turtle trying to nest right here. Wow. All right. So this is a little, a little tough. All right. I have a queen ant right there. A little, little queen ant. All right. So I'd say no nesting. This is a horrible place to nest. So what I've learned is when they nest here, we often lose the nest. I've tried to protect the nest, and I come back and they're fried. And it 
sucks because it's like, you know, it's just a wasted, wasted time. All right, so we're just starting. These are test holes. They're not getting quite <coughs> the, um, it's too much pollen in the air. They're not getting quite the temperatures that they want. All right, so I'd say this is just a test hole. Gonna make it look pretty for the people. So here's an area, it's a high rate of predation and they lay their nests in the soft shoulder of this path. Oh, look at this. Okay, little guy. So this is a painted turtle that overwintered. And uh, yeah, wherever his nest was, we're gonna take him and we'll head start this little guy. He'll go into, he'll go to Audubon. Oh, don't know where he came from, but you can see. All right, there's lots of predated nests. This is classic nest that was predated last night. That was a good painted turtle nest right there. Here's the painted. She's probably nested already. Okay, we're out looking for snapping turtle nests to protect. And this is the anatomy of a nest. Two front paws head this way, butt stuck in there. But it still looks like it was abandoned. This is a big sand pit. So I do have a snapping turtle over here. I'm not gonna get too close to it. That's a nice old snapper. Look at that. Oh god. Wow, that's a beast. That is a huge female. So they're dimorphic. Hi. Okay, so she looks like she's already been hit by a car before. It is so sad. Hi. Wow. Look at that crushed shell. Oh, what a horrific injury. Can you imagine living through that? The world is so unkind when you're a turtle. But what we do is we protect these nests and uh, we get to release a ton of the babies. So that's the reward. Wow. So what I do is I go through here and uh, it takes a bit of funness to find one of their nests. And a lot of work. Let's see if I get it. Look at, the, look at that footprint. That is a big, snapping turtle claw right there and then this is just a, a test dig so that means that she's using her i think she uses like her head and her neck as a heat sensor and they'll start digging right now this is kind of cool it rained pretty well last night and yesterday it was uh, really overcast so i don't think they're gonna find the temperatures that they want just yet so they'll do a lot of test digging until they find the right thing but look at those claw prints there are some big snapping turtles here if you can see it you can see where the tail slide and then the back claws and then they kind of make this sand angel Just big. This is, look at this, this is just ideal. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for the nest cavity. But she didn't cover it up. So what happens is generally when they nest, they will go and cover their nest up so well, you can't even see it. And the predators are actually finding them through their urine because they'll empty their system out. I don't even know. To, Turtles have bladders because snakes generally don't. Except the viper boas have something that's in lieu of a bladder. 
What? So Barb says there's a giant. <laughs> yeah, I I was here the other day and it was like, oh yeah, okay. So that is where we're getting the beginning of a nest cavity. So she's pointed this way and that's her tail. And then they'll start kicking this and making a nice nest. Yeah, so she's... There's some big turtles. Oh, yeah, look at that. So she just didn't... Wow, there's... Perfect. Look at that nest cavity. That is killer. Oh, she's a beast. Look at... Yeah, that's... That is awesome. That is so perfect. And you can see it goes... It's much bigger. Oh, my God. Look, I can put my fist there. So she hollows this out so expertly. That's killer. All right, it's still early in the season, so in the next couple days, we're probably gonna get a lot of nesting. And then we gotta save them quick, because of predators. Here's another nest of another small female. It is just nesting mania. And one thing that really stinks, we get a lot of disruption over here. Uh, we get a lot of uh, motorcycles, quads, bikes. They have fire pit parties and all that. Uh, so it's just trying to find a balance just like we just want to do our turtle conservation and hopefully they don't vandalize stuff We've had some problems in the past You can see a little painted turtle like You can see that slide of a snapper slide of a snapper But finding the eggs that's the tough one look at that trail just attempts to find just the right place to lay eggs. Go up here. Right there, here's an old nest from last year, protected. That's interesting. Okay, you can see aftermath of a nest. This is actually probably an overwintered nest that got nailed. All right, here's a very, very important thing that I figured out. Turtles need open horizons to lure them to nesting. I wish I just took a video right before I started nuking all these branches, but I'm gonna clear this out some and we wanna give them an alley to this. We want to bring them to this sand pit. Woo, 45 minutes and I cleared a lot of this. I should have started before. So what I'm doing is I'm making an alley and then I also went over here and took down trees. But you imagine you're a turtle and you're looking for a place that's sunny because they don't lay the eggs in the forest. So this is the habitat of Blandings, Spotteds, Painted, Snappers, Musks. So right here is really good. I cleared this whole edge and I created this opening. So what we're kind of doing is kind of uh, doing some of the work of beavers. And we do have beaver here. The beaver are helping me. They're busy over here. See the beaver right on those trees and they open up areas and obviously they create wetlands so you can see here's the beaver slide right there and the beaver are busy all night long working so creating the alley so just imagine you're a turtle and you're here and you look up oh look at that horizon I mean, yeah, there are some oaks <laughs> that are in my way, but that's still, I took down so much undergrowth. Those pine branches right there could need to go. I need a pole saw. And then the turtles come up here. 
and they come out into this open area. So if you know a safe area, certainly an area that you're going to protect, you can help them too. You know, this proactive conservation is uh, we, what we got to do. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Barb's already been there. So now, Barb is raking this. <laughs> Attempting to rake it, yeah. Yeah, Barb, I want all the leaves picked up. No, no grass, no nothing. All right. And then before long, we're gonna, oh, that's beautiful. Oh yeah. So this is great. So when we come back, I have to come back tonight and start looking, but I'm pretty excited. That area is looking open. All right, if you guys want a turtle conservation, I have <laughs> spared you so many videos because I know to some you might think it's boring. But look at that opening right there. And I strongly urge everybody to do this. Do something, be part of it. Humanity is just awesome. Soon shell is really pretty. Great tree frogs. Look at that. That's so we got some head starts here. Right We're gonna release these guys. All right, Trevor, you're gonna, this is all a huge part of conservation. So raising these guys up to this size has really impacted their lives and give them a much better chance at surviving because there's a lot less things that can eat them. So we're putting them back into the wild where they belong. And, you're down that frog, okay? and this particular species takes 14 to 20 years to reach sexual maturity. Look at this. So Ooh, that's another problem. Little froggy which... right there, dead center. Yeah, you gotta make it that yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Marky, would you like to release that turtle? <laughs> Show everybody your cool turtle. <laughs> yeah, he deserves kisses. That's <laughs> my buddy. This one's from North Shore Montessori School in Raleigh. Oh, they did an awesome job. Yeah. Bye, buddy. Go, go get that frog. It's no. so funny. <laughs> Some of them, like, take off right away. Some just kind of... They smell. You can see them smelling. Put it down, yeah. Mark. I can't see you with all that. The lighting is... Got off I can there. see there's one right here. There we go. There's one right here, there's one frog. right here underneath the frog. Come on, Tara. Let one go. And Trevor, do another one because my video wasn't videoing. <laughs> okay. This guy's really round. This guy's really heavy and round. So one thing we notice when we let these blaming turtles go, they're really getting their bearings so They'll put their heads down there and they really start smelling and tasting the water. It's a uh, it's very common so these, behavior. These North Shore, the big ones, all yeah. clocked in at over 270 grams. Those are like I literally the size of like eight-year-olds in some cases. Yeah, those yeah, are a fantastic all... job. Do it, Trevor. Okay, I'm going to name this one Bobby for some reason. Okay. All over two, and even the smaller ones were. Let's see. So the schools that are taking care of them, do they have a <coughs> pond sort of thing? No, we really supply all the like the tanks and the heaters and all the equipment. They raise them inside because we want to simulate the summertime temperatures, especially the water temp. And we use a lot of Zoomed products, which yeah. has worked out quite, because quite well. Because everything's dependent, their whole metabolism and growth is dependent on their cold-blooded animals. So, yeah. you know, that's the whole purpose of simulating the summertime temps, like in the wild. I mean, really, what do you got to work with? You know, May through early October, yeah. and then they go dormant. This way, they pretty much that first year from hatching till the end of the summer, whether they're in school and then after release, they've got a full year. Yeah, all right. Oh, look at that, I'm rubbing my little face. So we're getting ready to let some turtles go. 
these are all head starts. These are um, about nine months old. And these are ones that we protected from last year, so 2023. And look at the size. That's like the size of like an eight-year-old turtle. Mosquitoes are starting to get me. Yeah. You can hear, yeah, you can hear the gray tree frogs. It's that time. So this head starting program has really worked great. We've put a lot of turtles back, and we put a lot of work into tracking them. Uh, the end of May, beginning of June. We track the adult females, and it's a lot of labor, a lot of daily walking the areas and looking for females that are nesting and then getting them to nest. And we then protect those eggs, and then those eggs incubate out there. And right before they hatch, we go and dig them up, and we hatch them out. And then we put them into our partner programs with all sorts of uh, teachers and kids. This is in Massachusetts. And then in the classroom, the kids get to raise these and actually enjoy the experience and conserve. And, you know, obviously to conserve something, you have to care about it. So getting the little kids involved. And we got a little guy over there. That's Trevor. He's learning right now. Pretty cool. Blanding's turtles. They're literally endangered in Massachusetts and in New Hampshire. So this is a very important program and if we're lucky we're gonna so I think we have to beat 19 line. nests protected and that's, why they, that's gonna be a lofty yeah. figure I think last year we protected 17 or 18 <laughs> you want to be proud of yourself you found a pan turtle trying to nest <laughs> on, the on, the, on the pavement <laughs> these pan turtles have such a tough gig so okay here's a perfect example See what the turtle did? It expelled urine. And urine is what all the predators are smelling. So the fox and even coyote and possum and skunk, they smell that. So the contents of the bladder and that often shows the predator where the, uh, the eggs are. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting... Look at those blandings. This is, this is a very well-grown eight-year-old blandings. Um, we have blandings that are much smaller, so this is optimal. Look at the spotting on our head, too. This is exceptional. So we've notched her. We're going to put her back. But some kind soul found her. And we get to record all her data. Let's see. Come here. Let me look at your belly. Maybe nine. Look how pretty you are. You're beautiful. Oh, that's excellent. All right, awesome blandings. I know, I suck. <laughs> Some nice mud. <laughs> that was really good mud. There you go. Happy. Good life for the guy.